Hello and welcome to the Revolut Insider Podcast, where we explore Revolut's rocket ship from the inside out, one episode at a time. I'm your host, Alex Kirill, and joining me today is Mila Voronaya, backend engineer here at Revolut. Hi, Mila. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for being here today. And you are a backend engineer here at Revolut. Yes, that's me. Well, I wanted to talk to you about being an engineer here at Revolut so you can give us a better understanding of what an engineer does, an overview into our engineering department, and hopefully provide some tips along the way for those either looking to join us or start a career in engineering. Sure. I'll be happy to. Let's talk about what you're currently doing as an engineer, your day to day, and we'll cover how you got into engineering later on. Sure. I'm a backend software engineer in business department in Revolut. We have two departments. We have two separate apps, retail and business. And we make all the technical stuff when it comes to engineering. We make it happen. So as a backend engineer, you write code. Probably it's 50-50 when you write code and when you actually thinking how to, <laughs> how to write it or how to design something or how to plan an infrastructure when you have to discuss with your colleagues and spend time on meetings and uh, catch ups to stay aligned and, mm -hmm. and synced. And for someone like me who has very little knowledge into the world of engineering, how is a backend engineer different from other types of engineers here at Revolut? Normally it's backend and frontend. So frontend basically is what you actually see on the app all these colorful buttons, lists, and all this pretty interface. Mm -hmm. And backend is basically what's hidden. It's the technical magic behind it. That's what makes all the buttons and all the functionality actually do something. Mm -hmm. And what makes when you click on the button, let's say, uh, send your transfer to your counterparty when your transfer actually arrives in seconds. That's what your team does, kind of the behind the scenes of the functions yes. and the features. Yes. Very so, cool. Yeah. Well, it seems like engineers are the unsung heroes of our app. So if it weren't for you and other engineers, there would be no app. There would be no Revolut. We have some other roles. We have designers also. We have product owners. We have data analysts. So yeah, all kinds of specialities to help build this huge and really cool thing. Can you say a little bit about how engineers work as part of a team here? Basically, yeah, just for easy management, for convenience, we split our app into functionalities. So each team owns a functionality, let's say. And inside each team, there are normally a few roles. There is a product owner who basically defines the direction in which the functionality will develop. This person explores what actually clients need, what they want to see in the app, what is missing for them to make their life, they work easier. We do listen in Revolut, mm -hmm. we do listen to clients' feedback. That's how we collect our information, what we need to build next, what is most requested. Based on this, we plan our tasks, uh, we prioritize them and uh, so on. So backend engineers, as we already partially covered, backend does the, the backend work <laughs> and uh, frontend does the frontend work. <laughs> Normally it starts with designers because the designers, people who actually draw this colorful and nice interface that you see on the app, they decide what would be, let's say, convenient for users. They try to make it most user-friendly and most intuitive. Where, where should this button go? How the layout should be and, and so on. Based on this design, we take it into work. We obviously discuss it also. The whole team basically looks, looks into it. Yeah. So everybody's opinion is welcome and appreciated. There is a saying in Revolut that there's no stupid questions. <laughs> you can always say what do you think. So then if we, for example, saying about uh, some new functionality or expanding the existing functionality, we take it into work. So we start breaking it down into tasks on front end tasks, back end tasks, who should do what, and we coordinate the work. We have our daily catch ups to always be seeing to know who is doing what, and then we just crack on. Yeah. <laughs> And really with the ultimate goal of helping business customers manage their finances in an easy and efficient way. Of course, that's what we do. That's the main goal, to maintain it, to make sure it's actually existing <laughs> functionality is working and is working correctly. And obviously that we're able to keep up with the growth of number of clients. It's all working smoothly, nicely. And obviously we're expanding existing features. We add some more features, more functionality into it, and we introduce some completely new functionality. That's what we do. And these teams exist on the retail side, helping customers with their personal accounts. And in your case, it's the Revolut business side. What would you say are the main differences between working on the retail versus business side of things? Well, to be honest, I can't tell you in details because I never worked in, in retail. So <laughs> for my first day in Revolut, I worked in business. 
But I guess the answer is quite intuitive because retail, you focus on only a uh, single person so mm. it's because it's your personal, it's your private account. And in business, it can contain hundreds of employees and you have to manage them all. You have to manage your payments, your expenses, all these complex flows that a usual business has. And we try to give them all the tools they need to mm. succeed in their work. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier listening to feedback, and so that means that Revolut is evolving based on feedback that's provided to the company. Yeah, yeah, we do collect the feedback. It's our main source of our tasks and our plans and our strategy. So obviously, yes, of course, it's, it's very important for us what clients want. Can you give me an example of something you and your team have worked on for Revolut Business? Sure, of course. My team's domain is responsible for inviting more team members into the business because they can be a very small business with single owner, for example, or a self-employed person or something like this. But when it comes to big businesses, they want to invite the employees to do some business expenses and manage the permissions in the application, etc. And lately we've been working on expanding this functionality to approvals and uh, HRS integrations. So basically, all these features allow you to manage your employees better and to manage your mm. expenses in your business better because you have more control over your expenses mm -hmm. and because you can set up very uh, complex approval rules. For example, I don't know, your accountant can do this, but some other department can't do that or they can do up to a certain amount and then they would need your approval. Mm -hmm. And uh, like setting these controls. Yeah, spending control mm -hmm. to a quite granular level. Well, wow. We've been having this manual process to invite team members. We try to automate this process as much mm -hmm. as we can so the business can integrate with the HR system. Uh, currently, we only have Google integration. For example, if you have your Google workspace, you can integrate with it and you can automatically invite your team members. You can also set up automatic syncing of their data. For example, if their last name changes, if their role changes, if their manager is changing. With the HRS integration, it doesn't really matter how many employees you can have. All of this will be dealt with automatically for you. Well, sounds very technical, I think, from my point of view, at least. I don't think I could do it. I'm sure you can. What skills would you say are necessary to become a successful engineer? I actually never, never thought about it, but I guess kind of on the top of my head, Probably you do need some kind of logical and analytical mindset and some kind of abstraction mindset, let's say, because you have to, obviously, when designing, you, you have to design a really complex systems and you have to connect a lot of dots, let's say, in your mm -hmm. head to see how it's all going to work together and how it's all going to come together. And you have to think through many, many edge cases and you have to think through everything. What, what if this? What if that? So, yeah, you have to question everything. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly improve things. You have to make sure that everything is as efficient and as optimized as possible. So whoever feels comfortable around this and in this kind of environment, then, yeah, I guess that probably would be a start. For someone who might be looking to join Revolut as an engineer, what can they expect from working here? Probably experience, a lot of, a lot <laughs> of experience. It's a really big and cool project. It's fast-paced environment, but in a good way because we're developing quickly. It makes you think it's challenging. So if someone is thinking about joining Revolut, you would definitely welcome and I think you will really enjoy the journey. Oh, there you go. You heard it from Mila. <laughs> if Mila says so, then I trust you. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to ask you about your time at Revolut, Mila, and how you got into the world of engineering. Always happy to talk about myself. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Insider Views. This podcast is brought to you by Revolut Business. Tried, tested, and trusted by hundreds of thousands of businesses, Revolut Business gives you what you need to run your business in one place. Scale and save with global payments, multi-currency accounts, and smarter spending. To learn more, visit revolut.com slash business. And we're back here on the Revolut Insider Podcast. Hey, Mila. Hi, Alex. Long time no see. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you holding up? Oh, yeah. Trying my best. Oh, you're doing great. So thank you. Before the break, I had asked you what someone can expect from working at Revolut. But I want to hear about your time here. What's it like being an engineer at Revolut? Quite a journey. I've been with Revolut for four years now. When I joined, I joined the FinCrime team and then I moved to the current team where I am right now, the one that manages team members, as I told you, for three years. And I've built a lot of really interesting and cool features and participated in really big and complex projects. Got to lead some of them and obviously grow professionally. 
since I'm still here. So I think <laughs> that's a sign of something. How did you find yourself here at Revolut? Well, actually, they found me. Oh, uh, well, okay. Yeah, I was working in another fintech company. It was a small bank. So Revolut basically for me was my big high load project. They invited me to go through the interview process. That's what I did. And I got an offer and they relocated me from Moscow to London. Wow. And the rest is history. <laughs> As they say, yes. Do you remember what the recruitment or interview process was like when you first joined? Yeah, I think it was like a few stages. Uh, I do remember the first one was all my assignment task that you have to complete. You have to build a small project, small application. They accepted, they liked it. So yeah, I was invited to the next stage. I'm a Java backend engineer, so obviously there was an interview about Java itself. Also, there was, a, I think, a separate one about databases. And then there was a final interview, something called a like cultural fit. Is it? I was with the head of a business department. So we were just talking about basically more like about the project itself, the business domain. I remember feedback from the recruiter that she, she gave me. She said, the head of the department said, oh, she was asking the right questions. So that's, oh, a, that's a pass from, yeah, from <laughs> him. So that's how the recruitment process looked like. Well, it's a lot of steps to go through to become an engineer, but I think it's because we want to hire the right person. And I think it means that the person who's going through these stages also really wants to join Revolut. Yeah. So did you always know that you wanted to be an engineer? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. I had to waste a few years of my life, let's say, to find myself. My first education was in uh, tourism and hospitality. Wow. And that's absolutely kind of a different area. <laughs> I did work, to be honest. I did work in a hotel for a couple of years. As many people uh, graduating from school, or they really struggle to find themselves. And mm -hmm. they have to spend some time on kind of searching and exploring yourself. Unfortunately or fortunately, sometimes it's those experiences that we go through that lead us into the path of where we're supposed to be. To be honest, yes. You can look into this from this angle, obviously. Yeah, I think... There is the right time for everything. So yeah. sometimes you just have to learn something. You have to go through something to realize something, let's yeah. say. Now I'm thinking about it just back in the day when I was in school, all this engineering profession, software engineering, it wasn't really popular. Yeah. We did some like professional orientation tests and I actually did score in something technical, yeah. but no one really explained to me kind of mm -hmm. what professions are actually covering this. And back in the days... When you say programmer, when you when you say software engineer, you were imagining something completely different <laughs> than it is today. So my first diploma was in uh, tourism and hospitality. I thought I would travel, I would uh, see many people, and it looked really cool. Then I started changing jobs, and one of these just happened to be kind of more technical, let's say on the edge between working with people and some technical software, basically updating it and communicating with clients. They were forcing us to work on sales, obviously, mm. because we have to also try to sell more to okay. the clients. And I always hated this part. <laughs> so I was more like looking into the IT department. I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to do more cool technical stuff. Mm. And that's where I started to realize that's where I want to be. So then I just took the leap, quit my job. I started from square one, kind of, I went to a much smaller salary, I went to a small startup, I got a second diploma, I was a system engineer, and kept going, learning. So what can you say to people who might be considering starting a career in engineering or changing careers to become an engineer, like you did? Just go for it, just believe in yourself if you really feel that's where you belong and that's what you enjoy. Of course, don't do anything blindly, just <laughs> try at least. Don't quit your job that fits your whole family just yeah. to pursue some dream practice something, try coding, uh, just make sure first that it's what you actually enjoy and then have some plan, some financial transition, some mm -hmm. courses and go. Yeah, I love that. Just go. So wherever you are, believe in yourself and just do it and everything is going to be okay. I think that's right. It's just trust yourself, believe in what you can do and follow your dreams. Yeah. You had mentioned earlier studying tourism and hospitality. I feel like that is almost the opposite of being an engineer. Well, yeah, I guess it is. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of another example that there are no rules here. I know there is probably this image of engineer that normally it's an introvert, mm. but all the people are different. I try tourism, hospitality and uh, working with people. And also almost all my life I've been a dancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. What kind of so dance? Not sure how much you know about this, but it's mostly street dance styles like hip hop, house, walking. I was at the point when I was thinking which one should be my career. So yeah, there was a time, to be honest, when I was also working as a dancer, but the technical side in me is, is stronger. So mm. uh, that's why I felt like the technical job would be more stable <laughs> and would be better paid. Yeah. And it seems like you're quite the extrovert then. 
I guess, yeah, that would say that I'm an extrovert, not an introvert. <laughs> Even though I'm a software engineer, I still enjoy talking to people, be around them, yeah, doing stuff like this when you actually can also express your artistic side, let's mm. say. And how can someone who might be an extrovert like you, but is interested in engineering, do to either prepare themselves or adapt to this type of environment? When you enjoy it, it's like art. When you get into the zone, let's mm-hmm. say you don't track time, you're just doing it and you're just enjoying it. So I don't think you should prepare yourself to this. You you will be just naturally enjoying it. Mm. And it's still a creative process, as you've said. Yes, it's a very creative process because there are no right solution. There are many options and you can play with all of them and try to find the best solution in current circumstances. Definitely. So I guess my next question would be, why? Why engineering? There are many reasons that make you enjoy the process this profound sense of creation yeah. because you're actually making and creating something from scratch, something new, something that didn't exist. And now it's working and now it's doing what it's meant to be and it's really doing some magic. This is also like one of the things that I like about being in Revolut when you feel you're part of something bigger, that you're actually creating something huge and something really cool that brings value to lots and lots of people. It's really nice to see your friends using Revolut app mm-hmm. and you can't help but have this voice inside your head like, me, me, I've done it, I did it, that's, I'm working on it, I'm a part of it, I'm making it happen. So that's a really, really nice feeling. Yeah, really cool. Well, I just have one more question for you then. What advice would you give to younger Mila when you were just starting out in your career? Probably not nothing special, I wouldn't say, because... I would like to say that, oh, I should have chosen this technology or I should have learned this programming language or I should have done this instead of this. But there is a time and place for everything. And I think everything will happen for a reason and it should have happened. So, yeah, I guess the only advice I would say just, yeah, you're doing great. Keep doing what you're doing. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Keep supporting yourself through the choices that you make when you make them. Yeah. All right, Mila. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today and giving an overview of the engineering department here at Revolut and sharing what it's like to be an engineer working with Revolut Business. Sure. Well, my pleasure. Yeah, it was really, really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll see each other around. And for those listening, thank you so much. You can add the podcast to your favorites so you don't miss an episode and follow us on Instagram at Revolut Insider. Thanks for tuning in to the Revolut Insider podcast where we explore Revolut's rocket ship from the inside out. Until next time, remember, the sky is not the limit. It's just the beginning. Revolut changes the way you money.